My name's Amy and today I'm here with Dr. Rob Campbell with the Prince William Sound Science Center. And right now we're on the new wave, which is our research vessel. So it turns out you're a biological oceanographer. Do you yes. want to tell us what that means exactly? Uh, well, the thing about oceanography is that everything is connected. So we generally break ourselves out into biological, chemical, and physical oceanography. And the interaction between nutrients and things that are alive drives uh, the biological part of, of the ocean, uh, oceanography right. in the world ocean. Okay. What's your favorite aspect of what you do research with out here? Um, what I think is really cool about being an oceanographer in Alaska is that you need to be really versatile, so I get to do a little bit of everything. I look at uh, temperature and salinity patterns and how they change and uh, what's actually in the ecosystem, like what plankton are there, uh, and even, even work with fish. Nice. So when you're out on a research vessel like this one, what do you typically do? Um, when we go and do our standard trips of the sound, we have 13 stations that we hit every time. And each time we do that, we do the same thing every time. We have some instruments that we drop down in the water and then we take some samples. And the instrument package that we use is right here. Okay. This is called a CTD. What does that stand for? That stands for conductivity, temperature, and depth. Okay. Conductivity tells us the salinity, the saltiness of the water. And as well as those basic measurements, this has a bunch of other instruments on it. Uh, this here is a fluorometer. What does a fluorometer do exactly? A fluorometer tells us uh, how much phytoplankton, plant plankton there is. Plants are green because they have chlorophyll in them. Uh -huh. And chlorophyll has this kind of cool property where if you shine blue light on it, it flashes back some red light. Weird. And, and so this flashes blue light on the water and then measures the amount of red light that comes back. Okay. Which tells us something about how much phytoplankton is there. Why would you care about how much phytoplankton is hanging out? They're the ones that uh, do a lot of the um, production, the growing, uh, driven by the sun in okay. the ocean. I'll just fire things up so we'll have hydraulics and we'll throw it over. So what I do after firing it up is I make sure that the fluorometer here is flashing which tells me that it's working. There's that blue light. All right. And then we put it over and let it soak. That's our cast. All right, very cool. So have you found differences when you're near a glacier that the salinity comes up differently on the CTD? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. As well as uh, glaciers, you may have noticed we get a fair amount of rain here. Uh, in the winter, we can get a lot of snow and all of that water winds up into the ocean one way or another. And here in the Northern part of the Gulf of Alaska, when it does that, it actually floats on top. Uh, fresh water is a, a little less dense than oh. salty water and it creates what we call the Alaska Coastal Current which you can think of as something like uh, a river on top of the ocean and creates this um, current that you can see from space uh, of this turquoise colored water against the coast. So when we're thinking about the salinity measurements and things like that, why is it important for you to do this monitoring? Well, things we know change over time quite a bit. Here in Alaska, uh, the change is really something. We're seeing warming patterns all over the globe and we're, we're seeing that here as well. And so you need to go take the measurements to see how that's, how that's happening. And here in this part of Alaska, uh, we do see a warming trend of about a fifth of a degree per decade. Wow. And I'm also seeing the water, especially at the surface, become less salty because we're losing all kinds of ice mass as our, our glaciers and ice sheets melt. Yeah, wow. So we learned about how you could actually figure out how much phytoplankton is in the water, but they're tiny. So right. how in the world um, do you get a hold of plankton? Um, to really know what they are, you have to go and collect them yourself. And to do that, we use a plankton net. It's basically like a windsock <laughs> that's made out of mesh oh. that you pull through the water and it strains out the plankton. So it's just like a strainer you would have for like pasta or something. Yeah. But just a lot yeah. finer. Just really, really fine. And then down at the bottom of the net, we have these little cups here that we can wash the sample down into. We remove the cup and then we can put it in a sample jar. 
Okay. And then we preserve it with formaldehyde and take it back to the lab and look at it under the microscope. And your research technician is the one that takes the photos, right? Caitlin? Right. Yeah, yeah, she does an awesome job. Mm -hmm. Cool, let's see how this works. Okay. Okay, and down it goes. Guess we'll have to wait and see, huh? Yeah. So what kinds of stuff do you see in there right off? I can see lots of little copepods, which are crustaceans. I see ketignaths, which are arrow worms. They're ambush predators. They're totally transparent and they just sit in the water waiting for something to get close enough to them and then they cool. will strike like a, like a rattlesnake and they have venom that wow. paralyzes their prey. So Do they, they hurt can... you? No. Okay, that's good. <laughs> oh, yeah, there was a, a sonoralia. A sonoralia? What is that? That's the little moon jelly. Oh. Uh, so are jellyfish plankton? Yep. Why? I thought plankton was always small. Uh, plankton is from the Greek, which means to drift. Okay. And plankton are really just things that can't swim themselves in a particular place. Okay. Like a salmon is not plankton, because the salmon migrates. Right. You can see the jellyfish. Thanks, Rob, for showing us all this cool stuff, all these awesome plankton, and why it's important to study the ocean. You're very welcome.